Greetings everyone, Digital Extremes have released update 30.9 on all platforms. New player and early player experience changes. Introducing the Tenno Guide. DE have added a new UI notification when inside the orbiter that is a persistent reminder for quests to help guide new Tenno to their next steps. A lot of new players have felt lost once they finish Vor's prize and this persistent reminder will show them what to do next. This can be disabled at any time in the menus under the options, interface section and show Tenno Guide. Moving on, Heat Sword Crafting Requirements. We are changing the crafting requirement for the Heat Sword to require a new road rather than a neural sensor. Originally, this was meant to incentivize players to explore new nodes, but we want to get better gear in players' hands earlier. This change is smaller than most, but meaningful to new players looking to upgrade their melee early on. We've also reduced crafting times for the Rising Tide quest. In March 2021, we made Railjack more accessible by reducing the crafting resources and the time it took to build your Railjack. Now we will be reducing the crafting times again from one hour to one minute per part. As Railjack becomes a larger part of the game, we hope this change will allow new players to swiftly complete Rising Tide and prepare their Railjack for future flights. Amp Recipe Reductions. This is a pretty long one. This change is twofold. Reduced crafting costs and reduced standing costs for purchasing parts. Our goal here is to make constructing an amp more accessible to players by reducing resource demands. This is rooted firmly in the role upgrading your amp plays in performing well in main quests like Sacrifice as well as engaging in Focus Street related content. Here are the changes below. So for the Quill Prism, these are the ones in Cetus on Earth. Raplak. Standing cost reduced from 2,000 to 1,000. Iridite cost reduced from 60 to 40. Mercury liver cost reduced from 3 to 2. And Tear Azurite and Asher Divar cost reduced from 30 to 10. The Schwak Prism. Standing cost reduced from 5,000 to 1,500. Iridite 80 to 40. Norg Brain 3 to 2. Asher Divar 30 to 15 and Marquee Veridose 20 to 10. For the Granmu Prism, standing costs reduced from 7,500 to 2,000, Kuthol Tendrils 3 to 2, Breath of the Eidolon 5 to 3, Marquee Veridose 20 to 10, and Star Crimson 10 to 6. And lastly, for the Ran Prism, standing cost 10,000 to 2,500, Iridite 60 to 50, Saram Beetle Shell 3 to 2, Tear Azerite 30 to 20, and the Eshar Divar 30 to 15. As for the Quill Scaffolds, Pencher, standing cost reduced from 2,000 to 1,000, Grocktrol 60 to 40, Mercury Liver 3 to 2, Cetus Wisp 10 to 3, and Pyrotic Alloy 85 to 60. For the Shraxan Scaffold, standing cost 5,000 to 1,500, Grocktrol 80 to 60, Nord Brain 3 to 2, Cetus Wisp 15 to 4, and Copyright Alloy 85 to 60. For the Klepric Scaffold, standing 7,500 to 2,000, Mercury Liver 3 to 2, Cetus Wisp 20 to 5, Breath of the Eidolon 5 to 3, and First Steel Alloy 50 to 40. Lastly, for the Fard Scaffold, Standing cost 10,000 to 2,500, Grocktrol 60 to 40, Saram Beetle Shell 3 to 2, First Steel Alloy 85 to 60, and the Heart Nymph 2 to 1. For the Quill Braces, the Clapcraft standing cost has 2,000 to 1,000, Morphix 10 to 6, Fish Oil 35 to 20, Mercury Liver 3 to 2, and Cetus Wisp 10 to 3. For the Jutney, the standing cost has been reduced from 5,000 to 1,500, Neurodes 10 to 6, Fish Oil 35 to 20, Nord Brain 3 to 2, Cetus Wisp 15 to 4. For Lorin, the standing has been reduced from 7,500 to 2,000, Fish Oil 35 to 20, Cathol Tendrils 3 to 2, Cetus Wisp 20 to 5, and the Breath of the Eidolon 5 to 3. Lastly, the Ants Partha standing cost has reduced from 10,000 to 2,500, Morphix 10 to 6, Fish Oil 35 to 20, Saram Beetle Shell 3 to 2, and the Radiant Centrium cost has reduced from 2 to 1.
Moving to the Solaris Prisms, we have the Cantic, the Vega Torrid cost has reduced from five to three, Long Winder Lathe Coagulant cost 10 to six, and the Gyromag Systems and Radiant Zodian cost reduced from five to three. The Lega Prism Vega Toroid cost has reduced from five to three, the Sharamote Sagan Module cost 10 to six, Gyromag Systems and the Radiant Zodian cost five to three. And lastly, the Clamora Prism, the Vega Toroid five to three, Tromzion Entroplasma 10 to six, and the Gyromag Systems and the Radiant Zodian five to three. For the Solaris Scaffolds, Exard Scaffold, Coldatoroid 5 to 3, Long Window Lathe Coagulant 10 to 6, Atmos Systems 3 to 2, and the Hespasm Alloy 50 to 30. For the Disic Scaffold, the Coldatoroid 5 to 3, Sheremote Sagan Module 10 to 6, Atmos Systems 3 to 2, and the Hazam Alloy Cost 50 to 30. And lastly, for the Propus Scaffold, the Coldatoroid Cost reduced from 5 to 3, the Tromazon Entroplasm 10 to 6, Atmos Systems 3 to 2, and the Hespasm Alloy 50 to 30. And lastly, for the Solaris Amps, we have Braces. For the Suo Brace, the Solar Toroid Cost, 5 to 3, Long Winder Sagan Module, 10 to 6, and Marquee Fist, 5 to 3. For the Plaga Brace, the Solar Toroid Cost, 5 to 3, Sharamote Sagan Module, 10 to 6, and the Marquee Fist, 5 to 3. Lastly, the Certus Brace, Solar Toroid Cost, 5 to 3, Tromazon Entroplasm Cost, 10 to 6, and the Marquee Fist, Fist 5 to 3. We've also noted that any crafting component not noted is keeping its current cost. Moving on, DE have reduced costs for refined ore and gem blueprints in the Plains of Eidolon. They've said, to accompany our changes to amp crafting, the standing costs of blueprints for refined ores and gems from the Plains of Eidolon have been adjusted. Here are the new costs. Pyrotic Alloy and Tear Azurite have gone from 1,000 standing to 500. Esh Diva and Copyright Alloy, 5,000 to 2,500. Marquee Veridos and First Steel Alloy, 10,000 to 5,000. Star Crimson and Oroxium Alloy, 15,000 to 7,000. And the Radiant Centrium and Heart Nymph have gone from 20,000 standing to 10,000. Moving on, Sentient Core Standing plus Blueprint Changes. In addition to the already noted changes to Amps and Ore and Gems, we've included an increase to Sentient Core Standing Return and also modified the exceptional Sentient Core Conversion Blueprint. Those starting out on their Quills journey should find this allows them to progress through the Syndicate faster to reach the higher tier offerings. So, they've increased Standing Return from the Sentient Cores. Intact Sentient Core Standing Return Turn has gone from 100 to 250, Exceptional Sentient Core Standing has gone from 500 to 750, and the Flawless Sentient Core Standing has gone from 1200 to 1500. As for the Exceptional Sentient Core Conversion Blueprint changes, the Exceptional Sentient Core Conversion Blueprint now transforms 10 intact cores into 10 exceptional cores as opposed to 2 to 2, and the duration to craft and the cost to rush have been halved down to 5 minutes and 5 Platinum, respectively. The Radian, Centrium, and Heart Nymph values remain as one each. To conclude, players who had an exceptional Sentient Core Conversion Blueprint crafting will get a one-time gift of 10 exceptional cores in exchange for only spending two intact cores. A bank error in your favor. Next up is the Necromech drop rates and crafting cost changes. DE have said, Necromechs have started to play a vital role within the system, from being part of the Railjack experience to a great tool in our open worlds. While their firepower provides an advantage, the time and resource investment required to obtain one has shown to be a deterrent to newer players. As the new war approaches, we aim to alleviate that initial friction and provide an easier path of obtainment. Enemy Necromechs now have a 50% chance to drop a Necromech part across the board, which is evenly distributed. The battle required to defeat a Necromech is not easy nor quick. This increased chance of getting a Necromech part helps to reduce the time investment needed in order to gather the mandatory parts to build your first Necromech. Additionally, we've halved most of the mining and fishing part costs for crafting the Void Rig, as this is the first Necromech players see in the heart of Deimos Quest, so we want to 
make acquiring it a little easier. Bone Widow has been left as a longer term goal. So the changes are the Void Rig casing, Adramal Alloy has gone from 120 to 60, Stellated Necrothene 16 to 8, and Venerdo Alloy 40 to 20. For the Void Rig engine, the Tempered Baphylite has reduced from 100 to 50, and the Biotic Filter 2 to 1. For the Void Rig capsule, Spinal Core Section 30 to 15, and the Marquee Veridose 20 to 10. And the Void Rig Weapon Pod, Biotic Filter 6 to 3, Thormic Distillate 80 to 40, and the Shark Electroplax 45 to 25. So those were the Necromech drop rate and crafting cost changes. Next up, Hell of the Kubrow quest changes. For new players, we are changing the Kubrow egg drop rate to be 100% from the first Kubrow den and setting the quest to solo mode only. This change will only affect new Tenno playing the quest for the first time and does not affect Kubrow egg drop rates outside of the quest. We are also shortening the survival mission within the quest from 10 minutes to five minutes. Lastly, we have additional new player experience changes. DE have removed Ceres to the Jupiter task of defeating a prosecutor to reduce the initial friction and get you along your way faster. Prosecutors could take a long time to spawn if you're unlucky, and therefore this change. They've also increased the window of time where you can deal damage to the Vahek propaganda drone during his boss fight from 8 seconds to 10 seconds, with a note that newer players who attempted the Vahek boss fight right when it was available to them found this phase more difficult than it really needed to be. They've updated the new strain objective for the synthesis targets to make it less confusing and it now reads sanctuary target as opposed to a specific enemy type which could come across confusing. Lastly, Tilbregor's shield now has a shield regeneration delay of two seconds compared to how it instantly regenerates currently to provide newer players more of a fighting chance. Next up, for update 30.9, we have new Warframe Augments. Arm yourself with these new Warframe Augments for Trinity, Lavos, and Zaku. Trinity's new Augment is Champion's Blessing. You can pick it up at the new Loka or Perrin sequence, gain primary and secondary critical chance for 12 seconds for each percent you heal on allies up to 350%. Lavos's Augment is Swift Bite, you can purchase it from the Red Veil or New Loka. Reduce the ability cooldowns by 4 seconds when at least 4 enemies are hit. Ophidian Bite is granted 30% additional ability range. Zaku has two. The first is Vampiric Grasp. You can purchase it from Steel Meridian as well as the Cephalon Suda. When a stolen weapon deals damage to an enemy affected by the Lost, Gaze, or the Vast Untime, Zaku heals by 25. And then lastly, Zaku again. The Relentless Lost. So again, you can purchase it from the Steel Meridian or Cephalon Suda. Casting the Lost increases the ability strength for the Lost by 35%. The bonus can stack up to three times and resets if you cast the same ability twice. Moving on, we have former mastery rank changes. DE said the following. When we first introduced Former years ago, Warframe was a much smaller game. We had fewer weapons, fewer Warframes, and way fewer mods. As players continue their Former journey, there's often discussions on doing a quality of life pass to the way things work with our favorite golden puzzle piece. We want your mastery rank to be considered when using Former to establish a baseline power level for your playable characters. So what does this mean? If a Mastery Rank 30 player uses a Former, they won't have to re-unlock any abilities or their ranks on a given item. Yes, they'll still need to level the gear itself to apply another Former, but depending on your Mastery Rank, you can have access to more or all abilities on your unranked gear. This achieves our goal of keeping Former essential to build customizations, but allowing players with higher Mastery Ranks a more convenient experience. So with this change, it will make it so your mastery rank impacts how much you have unlocked by default on former use. A mastery rank 10 player would have all of a former Valkyrie's abilities unlocked upon applying a former to her, albeit those abilities won't be at their full strength. With the end goal being a mastery rank 30 player can use a former without ever having to be locked out of their abilities. Simply put, the higher your mastery rank, the higher the baseline of your gear when using former. In addition to the original developer workshop posts they made, they've said that post-dev workshop feedback and continued conversation 
conversation have added on another related change to reaching Mastery Rank 30+. Sorties and arbitrations now allow Mastery Rank 30+, players that have put at least one former into their Warframe to bypass the Rank 30 Warframe requirement. Moving on, we have Nick's ability changes. For Mind Control DE have said that the thinking behind these changes are fueled by the amount of investment towards this single target and having that pay off more in your favor. So base 500% damage increase to target itself that you then feed into your weapon DPS. They've increased the base duration of 45 seconds at maximum rank and the mind control target now teleports to keep up acting similar to other allies like Wukong's twin, etc. For Psychic Bolts, while this change is minor and provides more of a visual cue, the goal here was to provide a better presentation and feedback when Psychic Bolts connects with the target. So therefore, they've added a minor one-time stagger to targets hit by Psychic Bolts. And lastly, for Absorb, they've increased the base range to 15 meters at max rank. Scaling range is now capped at 50 meters, and they've stated that this is solving for an exploit, ensuring that damage is balanced by energy capacity. Nyx's Assimilate Augment now allows you to roll, similar to Mace's Waltz. The Absorb stat screen now shows the max explosion radius value. Absorb's Additive Weapon Damage Bonus now applies to the player's equipped melee weapon, and they have made a minor tweak to the GPU particles to clean them up. Next up, we have full UI reskin and fixes. DE said, we've got a handful of reskinned UI screens for your viewing pleasure. Some of these are already live from previous hotfixes, but we've listed them here for full exposure. Those being the invasion screen UI update. The newly skinned invasion screens offer less cluttered visuals and simplified text to alleviate initial confusion. Spectres, a fresh updated look with tooltips on hover for the Spectre system. Next up was combos. Melee combos have been visually divided into their own sections with a handy legend of the basic controls at a glance. Poster screen, fresh updated look with UI 3.0, and then the dojo coloring screen, fresh updated look. Additionally, the screen tile has been updated from dyes to polychrome dyes. The in progress state has a new animated icon. The in progress state is now separate from the pause state. The in progress sorts to the top with paused and completed continuing to function the same as it was already, that being a sort by progress option in the sort dropdown. And they've also added tips and fixed the completed die description, calling it a pigment. They've updated the text customization UI, it's UI 3.0 now, as well as the weapon upgrade action and custom weapon vendor action screen. Moving on, we have the decoration mode changes the basic and advanced mode additions. So, Warframe decoration tools are all about customization. We value that quality. The learning curve for new players, however, can be pretty steep. Tools like surface snapping and rotation axis are ideal for ambitious decorators with particular visions for their orbiters and dojos, but they can overwhelm Tenno new to decorating. We aim to address that difference. The UI improvements and more discussed below include improvements for new and experienced decorators alike. Therefore, introducing basic and the advanced mode. To accommodate different approaches to decorating, we've created two distinct modes. The UI team has done a polish and pizzazz pass on decoration menus. The basic mode only offers essential tools, place, move, remove, duplicate, rotate, and scale. The new help window describes camera movement, capacity costs, and the advanced mode. The basic mode is intended for new players and Tenno who just want to quickly place decoration to give rooms a bit of flair. It's introductory and quick to use. As for the advanced mode, it houses all of the customization focused tools decorators already know and use expertly. Decorators can press tab at any time to switch between the basic mode and the advanced mode, with this mode being intended for Tenno who are serious about custom decorating. It's specific and focused. Next up, controller binding changes. Some decoration controls on controllers were adopted 
imported from Arcwing and Railjack. We've decoupled those functions to create controls specific to decorating. Here are the biggest keybind changes. I'll be going over the Xbox control changes, but the PlayStation and Nintendo Switch are up on your screen if you want to go through them, and then we'll move on. So, the old Xbox binding for place decoration was the right stick. It is now X. Clear decorations was non-existent. It is now right stick. Move decoration was X. Now it's A. Remove decoration was LT, so the left trigger. Now it's left bumper. Rotate was left trigger. Now it's left bumper, with the rotation axis cycle being X, and the reset all rotation being Y. Push and pull was right trigger. Now it's right bumper. Camera facing was right bumper. Now it's X. Confirm was X, now it's A. The advanced mode switch was non-existent, now it's left stick. Help was non-existent, now it's right stick. Move camera up and down was A and left bumper, now it is left trigger, right trigger, and for constrained movement. Move on the X axis is now D-pad left. Move Y is D-pad up and move Z is now D-pad down. Once again, PlayStation and Nintendo Switch controller changes as well as the Xbox ones are up on your screen. A new look. We also refreshed the UI design overall with this change. So enjoy the new look that improves readability with a Warframe flair. Rotate decoration previews. Instead of a static image, the personal decorations menu will show 3D decoration previews that allow decorators to rotate decorations before placing them. Right now, this feature is only available for personal decorations. All decorations are now scalable. In the past, only dojo decorations have been scalable. You can now scale personal decorations too, from dojos to the orbiters, Tenno and customize decoration sizes. And then, Dojo Improvement, introducing the Arrival Gate. You can now control where Tenno spawn in your dojo, just place an Arrival Gate and Tenno will appear in that very spot when they visit. Dojos without an Arrival Gate will default to the current spawn system. Moving on with the update, update 30.9, general additions. DE have added new animations to Wisp and Titania's moveset when using gun blades, Lavo, Sevagoth, Zaku, Yureli, Baru, Gauss, Hildren, Wisp, Protea, and Grendel are now available and can be used in Frame Fighter once their fragments have been found and scanned. They've added sneezing animations to companions, time to start carrying around tissues, and they've added the gilded icon to amp inventory descriptions if the item has been gilded. For general changes, DE have renamed the Gunblade Heavy Attack from a spinning uppercut to full bore. When dragging around mod configs to swap, aka swap mod config A to config B, we now swap applied helmet abilities as well to support the modding of a given helmet choice. Wisp players who have the fused reservoir augment equipped will now start missions with the selection on the fused reservoir. When a player redeems a code in the market, we now have robust icons to depict the item you're redeeming. If it is applicable, sitting in the helmet chair with a warframe you haven't subsumed yet will now move the option to the top of the list. We now show you the invasion progress at the end of mission screen when you're completing an invasion, aka two of three fights for corpus complete. They've changed the description of galvanized amplitude to better reflect its current function, which clarifies that area of effect damage is not included. They continue. We want to explain why, because it is very important to us that everyone understands where we are coming from with our current design mindset. AOE weapons are the dominant ones by every usage metric. We see this day after day, having this bonus applied to the AoE instance felt dangerously close to a myopic choice concerning powering up player arsenals that simply do not need it. This mod never worked on AoE and the description now explains that to avoid confusion. We understand those seeking a different outcome will disagree with this choice but ultimately we are not willing to further holster AoE at this time. This is due to the increasing difficulty in creating content that serves to challenge the Tenno. Moving on, they've added some simple logging for Lenaro and Cephalon capture scoring in dedicated servers. Change Limbo's Rift status for vehicles. On mount, the vehicle inherits the rider's Rift state. If the rider's Rift state changes while riding, the vehicles will change to match. And if the vehicle's Rift state changes, the riders will change to match. 
They've updated the operator's void dash effects to faster GPU versions. General lighting improvements were made to trees in the Plains of Eidolon. They've updated melee slam effects, made some small updates to the ghoul saw right effects, cleaned up the elemental effects on the heat dagger, added the numeric separators option in the interface menu to change how numbers are formatted. By default, the format chosen is selected based on your language. There are four different formats supported. Comma for thousands and period for decimal, period for thousands and comma for decimal, non-breaking space for thousands and comma for decimal, and period for thousands and apostrophe for decimal. Moving on, you will now be sent back to the dojo instead of your orbiter when everyone in your squad dies and loses all their revives in Railjack missions. In scenarios where you are taken to the relay from your orbiter, initiating the help clam mission from navigation, etc., you will now be taken to the strata relay on Earth, with strata being the first relay new players encounter. It just made sense to swap Lorunda out for a more accessible relay. The Valus surveillance drone in the first mission of the Voxelaris quest will now continue to replenish shields if they have been completely depleted. They've clarified the Hold Your Breath Nightwave Act to include in the Coover Fortress as to alleviate some confusion. They removed the Tenant Gregory's eligibility from Conclave. They've increased the reflection intensity on metals to better match environmental lighting conditions, increased lighting in certain areas in the Orbiter's personal quarters. Maru now has an I-10 inspired map marker in Maru's Bazaar. Quests that thrust you right into the action will now at least wait for you to select your reward from the daily tribute screen before the big thrust, and they remove the repeat mission button after completing a Kuva flood mission due to an exploit. Fazaku changes and fixes with update 30.9. DE changed the vast untime to recast while active by tapping the ability and deactivated by holding. They fixed the inability to turn off vast untime if you do not have enough energy. They fixed a gap between the casting animation with Zaku's gaze and freezing the target, which allowed them to die before they were affected by gaze. Lastly, they fixed Zaku's grasp of lock having glitchy animations. Urelli fixes. DE fixed Mutilus Ospreys, Napalms, and likely other enemies not being able to damage or inflict status effects on Urelli while on Barulina, with a note that this also fixes missing HUD effects when a status proc is affected while on a vehicle. They fix the inability to pick up index points while riding on Urelli's Marulina, the inability to pick up the Isolation Vault bait while riding, the UI prompt for the Railjack tactical menu and Omni tool disappearing after a player casts Marulina as you rally with a controller, getting stuck in parts of the data vaults in Corpus Spy missions while riding Marulina, the tenant Diplos lock on ability not working for client players when using a vehicle, and they fixed incorrect translations for the Urelli Fazali helmet in traditional Chinese. As for the game optimizations with 30.9, DE have optimized Vorbin's Bastille Vortex to fix DPS in performance, significant frame rate drops when Nidus' Larvae ability grabs large groups of enemies, a nasty hitch that would occur periodically in Sanctuary Onslaught missions, they optimized several small hitches when standing near certain level triggers, aka navigation on the railjack, they optimized changing wear and tear in the Orbiter Interior Appearance tab, they fixed micro hitches that would occur when loading into missions. They optimized pathfinding for low core systems, made systemic micro optimizations to the UI system, several UI loading optimizations, minor performance optimizations across the game, data optimizations for the Cambian Drift. They optimized loading times, made micro optimizations to rendering, micro optimizations to level loading, micro optimizations to game startup and level loads, systemic micro optimizations to multi core support, and they optimized small hitches that would occur when a quest did a screen fade. For controller changes and fixes, they improved melee weapons rumble controller feedback to have more of an accurate response when attacking. They changed the Nightwave cred offerings callout on controller to be the top face button Y on Xbox instead of clicking the right thumbstick as it would conflict with a new tenor guide hover action. They fixed the issue with tutorial hints not updating if switching between keyboard and controller while the hint is active in the Call of Tempestari quest and they fixed icons in the controller binding screen being misaligned. 
Moving to the game's overall fixes with update 30.9, let's begin. They fixed a crash that could occur if you ran the game without the launcher, a crash that could occur when casting Ninus's larvae multiple times, a large spot load when exiting the arsenal in quick succession if you had a Helminth puppy, Session not using his weapon properly in the War Within quest, a case where an enemy converted to a Kuvalich thrall under the influence of faction changing abilities would be unable to finish with a mercy in a defense mission. Mission. They fixed certain scenarios where acolytes would spawn in steel path when you're AFK. Arsenal changes to your Warframe not saving after removing an overridden ability via Helminth. Certain screens, aka the Simulacrum selection, Grustard Bolt selection, etc. Losing functionality if you typed into the search bar before the items showed up. Coloring issues with the Ninus Frike skin with a note that this issue was isolated to the loincloth section of the skin where the color channel was showing two opposing colors when using a bright color for the secondary channel. They fixed Eidolons being forcibly moved with Bone Widow's firing line ability with a note, while this may sound harmless, a full squad of Bone Widows could deplace the Eidolon into the water, instantly spawning multiple Vonvolus. They fixed Ivara's cloak arrow turning your Necromech permanently invisible, clients seeing the host player stuck in a knockdown animation and then sliding down. Steel path incursions on disruption nodes having incorrect completion requirements, aka one conduit complete versus the intentional four. They fixed a Malcolm Alkanox not enhancing the grabbed enemy and instead just hugging before letting go. They fixed the fishing spear phase during the Heart of Deimos quest not being correctly thrown the second throw. Nakax operator mask not displaying on preview. Deluxe warframes with skin specific attachments that being Ember, Pyraxis, etc. Having them unequipped by default when purchased. The last mission results not retaining total mission time. Ledge Krill respawning inside the ground if he was pushed off the map with a push ability, aka Banshee, Sonic Boom, etc. in his fight alongside Vor. They fixed subsumed Aqua Blades having no cast audio, weapons with one bullet in their magazine such as the Vectus and Exergis, bypassing the fire rate limit if equipped with a max rank Arcane Pistolier. They fixed reloading an extra bullet into the Strun if you fired five or more shots before the reload, shooting yourself with the Archiplasmor when first firing after you've been revived. They fixed the Cernos Prime vertical spread shot, doing two times damage of the horizontal spread shot. They fixed rapidly toggling Titania's razor wing mode and operator, allowing you to clip through geometry. They fixed an incorrect version of Allied V appearing via transmission during the second dream quest. Several Necros helmets having silver parts that could not be colored otherwise. And they fixed Wisp destroying the source moat by flying to them with Willow Wisp with a note, this only affected the moat visually as the functionality was still there. They fixed mastery style challenges such as the rifle mastery, pole weapon mastery, blade mastery, bow mastery, etc. not tracking the challenges correctly. The from on high challenge not tracking in the Orvalis or Cambian Drift. A door with the sister of Parvo's showdown capital ship that was unnecessarily locked. Bone Widow's meat hook giving affinity when it misses an enemy and costs zero energy. DE have fixed Void Rig's Necro Web Grenade Canister exploding prematurely. Malcolm Barrel Diffusion not modifying the roll length of dodges. Glaives not being affected by abilities that attract projectiles, aka mags magnetize. And DE have also said in regards to this fix, this also fixes a glaive that has been redirected in such a way, infinitely bouncing. And it also fixes glaives being unable to punch through certain metal surfaces aka crewman helmets. They've also fixed projectiles from jugulous enemies not always being redirected when intended, issues with textures in the Sans Venaris quest, UI element inconsistencies in the Railjack void storms between hosts and clients, issues with the Sidario Sindana having green lens flares that cannot be colored, playing as Vault during the tutorial allowing electric melee damage to occur as a result of the passive, an issue where capes can sometimes float in dioramas, issue with incorrect placement of infested Sinu in a Deimos isolation vault, an issue with the Railjack forward artillery reticle not changing if you swap weapons while in the seat, an issue with the Akalak turret explosion always showing as white, HUD issues with companion health and shield stats that would occur whenever a player is revived. They fixed issues with the menu stacking in the user interface on junctions. 
some issues with the waypoint marker navigation in parts of the Grenier Fortress, an issue with controllers not being able to properly select pop-up options on certain UI elements, issues with certain languages text strings not fitting in the Syndicate UI, unowned Parazon mods not getting shown as new when picked up, some enemies being unable to activate alarms, the Cedo's magazine being stuck in your hand after reloading, the Executioner Nightwave Act progressing from certain non-stealth kills, Davo's open line when accepting the Man of Few Words quest being cut short by the diorama, the Basmu's lifesteal reload sound getting spammed if you were knocked down, they fixed dual energy color not properly being applied on the target's prime's armor, Boosters not being listed near the top when sorting the end of mission rewards from importance. The Cremata sign Dunner on Titania Prime appearing flip and bigger after using Razor Wing. The hangar doors in Grenier Galleons sometimes not having collisions. Being unable to open the polychrome color picker if clicking the color instead of the name of the category. They fix some mountain visibility issues in the Cambian Drift. Parts of the terrain in the Plains of Eidolon extruding out of a rock. Certain path decals showing up as black in the Corpus Gas City tile set, the Eros Wing Ephemera's icon missing the primary feathers, some areas where players could fall out of the world in the Grenier Settlement tile set, they fixed the Harmonious Pillars puzzle in Pavlov on Lua, being far more difficult to complete for clients due to the clients displayed on the wall not lining up with the order that the pillars must be activated in. They fixed activating transference in a certain spot in the entrance of the Orvalis elevator disconnecting the player camera if the host does it and causes you to become invisible, unaffected by gravity, and invulnerable if the client does it. This also fixes everyone losing the ability to open the pause menu. They fix lovelings and candidates, spawning when no one in the squad can actually start an adversary, with a note that this did not complete the call of the Tempestari quest, and it also fixes cases of being able to gain a Sister of Parvos when you're ineligible. They fix falling out of the Corpus ship tile set when void dashing as the operator down a specific part of the map, being able to get out of bounds in any void survival mission without any risk from the enemies, Lua being visible from the orbiter while orbiting Earth before having completed the second dream quest, they fixed a script crash caused by quitting through menus if your hey kiddo friend was in the process of disappearing after making an appearance. They fixed a floating rock near the Temple of Prophet in the Orvalis, incorrect legendary core icons in the legendary one mastery test screen. They fixed using launcher weapons in proximity of a shock Eximus causing self damage. They fixed one of the flashback sequences in the war within playing faster than the dialogue if void dashing ahead too fast. They fixed a script error related to Trinity's Blessing, a part of the background overlapping on top of an asteroid in the sentient anomaly Murex tile set, the Inaru's Void Crystallis HUD indicator showing damage remaining to be blocked instead of damage reduction, they fix clipping issues with the Locan and Red Veil armor across many warframes, the Terminal Velocity mod not applying projectile velocity changes to Sentinels using the Hellstrom weapon, changing the emissives on the Ogrus rocket launcher skin not not applying changes, they fixed avatars, sometimes clipping through elevators if running with low frame rate, squad restores appearing gigantic when placed on a specific spot on the tram in the palace mission on Ceres, they fixed being unable to use Arcwing Blink in open zones if Mirage's Hall of Mirrors is active before deploying Arcwing, they fixed being able to fly inside the Corpus Capital ship's model after parking the Railjack right against it, the Tenant Agendus' shield appearing partially up upside down when equipped with Baruch, ships flying in and landing at the platform in the relays stacking on top of one another, Nidus Prime missing half of his body when exiting the dorsal and ventral turrets in Railjack, they fix the Railjack hologram above the Plexus console in the orbiter defaulting to blue briefly before reverting to the chosen colour after returning to the orbiter from relay or the hub. They fix the locate the father objective you are not appearing during the Heart of Deimos quest, a soft lock when clients are viewing a profile or chat link from the relic selection screen if a host cancels the mission vote, enemies appearing ghostly and losing body parts when surviving mag's pool, the player not reviving properly as Sevagoth's shadow if they die in Arcwing in Railjack missions, they fix disarming an acolyte with the Halakar or Halakar Wraith replacing your secondary weapon with a rank 0 version of the acolyte 
Acolyte's weapon. They fix some areas in the Corpus Outpost tile set where players could get stuck, clients getting stuck waiting for players when attempting to extract from the capital ship in the Corpus Railjack missions if the host dies and has run out of revives, which also fixes the host getting stuck dead on the capital ship with an endless please wait screen. They fix floating environment parts in the Grinny C-Lab tile set, a script error caused by backing out of a weapon bundle screen in the in-game market before it opens and then quickly snapping to the purchase weapon button and selecting it. They fix glyphs in the glyph selecting screen, missing their backgrounds and blending in with the background UI theme color. They fix the growing power aura mod, not applying its effects on deployed arc heavy weapons. Clients still seeing Nemesis, aka the Liches or the Sisters, Waypoint and healthy wise in the HUD after a squad mates get the full Requiem sequence correct. They fixed a map hole in the rock wall in the Corpus Outpost tile set. Mastery rank 0 players being able to access the Steel Path incursions with the note so that players cannot access the Steel Path incursions until they have unlocked the Steel Path, meaning taxing is no longer an option for them. They fixed an issue where the arsenal could get stuck if you swipe your mouse across all the different weapon types, a credit cache not showing the correct amount in the end of mission screen, Kivats in the look link dioramas showing the same tail style regardless of their actual tail style. They fixed elevator clipping issues in the Grenier C Lab tile set, players being unable to damage infested spawn pods if their primary or secondary weapon don't have any form of punch through, a small hole and missing collision at the entrance of the bottom right cave by the hillside ruin in the plains of Eidolon, multiple NPCs that being Railjack crew or spectres attempting to revive other fellow NPCs which ultimately ended with them not being able to be revived. They fixed a script error when depositing index points with Eidolon fights with when damaging Corpus cruise ships with Kuvalich's tactical inversion ability with Baruch's desolate hands. They fixed the first sortie mission being locked even if the no is unlocked until the player accesses a regular mission node, enemies realizing they can push aside helium barrels that fall in their path in the Gas City tile set, texture streaming glitches that could occur when loading into missions, the game pausing after changing HUD colors while in a solo mission, which also fixes a full loss of functionality when using transference after changing HUD colors. They fixed a script error after a host migration in mobile defense missions. They fixed hard shapes and outlines around warframes while walking through water. They fixed the host not being able to melee and clients not being able to shoot after throwing Void Rig's Necroweb canister. A host migration dialogue going away prematurely for clients. The hidden messages quest guide inadvertently taking players to the proper planet for the riddle being able to get multiple drops from the Stalker while only using one beacon. They fix multiple issues in the Deimos Crypt Capturer scene. They fix the default button in Capturer, returning your settings to whatever you had selected when you press the advanced camera controls button. They fix Nidus Prime having a hole in his armpit. Some crewmate transmissions only playing for the host, but not the client players. They fixed fish in your personal quarters aquarium being damaged by bullet jumping and playing visual effects and sounds. They fix movement momentum carrying over when using transference while Titania is in Razor Wing, Wisps, Reservoir buffs, and Sebagos Gloom effects affecting Titania's Razor Flies, Railjack options appearing in the Orbiter Pause menu before you acquire a Railjack. They fix Town Vendors, Syndicate NPC bodies disappearing when opening a player's profile while interacting with them. They fix jittering bodies when on a K-Drive and adjusting the camera angles. The enemy name text overlapping for those that have longer names. The image for the initiation bounty from Konzu being stretched. The Deimos Delicacies Juggernaut getting stuck in numerous doorways when trying to sniff out a snack. Darjins in the Plains Vitalum sometimes not attacking players in Arcwing. The inventory weapon summary not indicating that an arcane adapter is installed with a note that an icon will now appear for an installed arcane adapter. They fixed getting a HTTP 400 error when attempting to fuse a Vought Railjack weapons together. Enemies getting stuck between railings and crates in a specific area in the Corpus ship tile set. A notification pop up for when deadlock protocol quest becomes available even when you aren't mastery rank 4. They fixed seeing the ungilded mower instead of ungilded hound when attempting to polarize. They fixed the Landing Craft skin 
hover information always saying you don't own the respective landing craft even when you do. They fixed augments not being properly marked as owned in the syndicate offerings, a handful of signed is not sitting properly on Railjack crew members. They fixed the highlight diamonds around mining locations not appearing when you have your mining tool in hand, seeing the bounty failed UI and rounds complete one if a host and client complete two rounds of an endless bounty in the Cambian Drift, start the third round, but then extract to the Necrolist. They fix the hoops attached to the waist of the base Equinox skin, clipping through the leg when equipped on Equinox Prime, Octavia's mallet marker being visible to everyone, this should only be visible to the Octavia that casted it. They fixed overly aggressive UI shakes when starting within Vome residue hotspots in the Cambian Drift. They fixed Garuda's blood altar affecting conservation targets. The name for the newly selected Wisp Reservoir overlapping the ammo counter and melee combo counter. The inability to duplicate I-10 statues in the dojo if available in the vault. They fixed Cephalon's missing in the Cephalon capture conclave game mode, normal star chart nodes being locked after an event expires aka the necrolist after the nights of numerous events. They fixed mods marked as new throughout the mission not having the new tag on the end of mission screen. One of Vor's taunt transmissions playing twice in two different missions during Vor's prize. They fixed a flickering texture on the floor of the ballroom simulacrum. Incorrect minimap icons for Vey Heck during his boss fight. The camera in the pursuit Hessian into the asteroid field stage of the War Within continually switching between first and third person. They fix the gift recent players list not populating players who are offline or friends or clan members. The helmet next reward text being cut off and they fix text for the in-game market discounts being outside of its text box. That was update 30.9. The initial recording was one hour and we'll see how much editing we can, we can cut that down. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.